you know, I take this very seriously. If a brother in the doubt is trying to play games like that, like if, if I come to know and I know him, like he's, you know, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be a bad day for him. Um, but at the same time, it's important to acknowledge that okay, he did bad and he'll be questioned for what he did. But you have to ask yourself, what could you have done to avoid the situation? Whereas we know that a person that doubts him should protect himself. We must also know that he can also fall victim to his desires. You can either look at it from the angle of something was done to you, or you could look at it from the angle of you did something. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah amma ba'd assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh so guys in this video we talk with a sister who uh, um, has been a victim to one of these da'wah guys who ruined lives um she uh some guy approached her on a second wife situation ended up basically you know breaking her heart and whatever have you so um very genuine sister and I think she was hard she was she was she was violated by this guy but there's one thing that I got across to her which I want to get across to all of you which is that no matter how thin you slice the bread there's always two sides and I think it's very important because a lot of the times we don't we don't address the other side so uh inshallah I hope you guys benefit from this video watch it because you're gonna see what the other side of the bread is and the other side of the bread is actually not something to put someone down, but it's to empower them and help them to get out of the situation. So, and I think the sister, mashallah, may Allah honor, she really took it on board. And I think she benefited. And I know a lot of girls are in this situation. And I think they'll benefit and take heed from this as well. Listen, guys, if you want to be on the next Nasir session, email at Nasir session at gmail.com. Um, inshallah, make sure you guys click the notification bell because you can instantly be updated when another video comes out and i also wanted to mention is that we have uh i do a class that i do every weekend where i go through lessons within the quran okay i go through lessons within the quran uh we go through themes within the quran so right now one of the themes that we're going through right now i don't know if it's going to if you're going to see this if this theme is going to still be present by the time you see this video but we're going through how allah helped the prophets within the quran so it's a weekly class i do and we do we, we when we go through one topic we go to another topic we go to another topic so we're going to go through different themes within the quran lessons within the quran if you guys would like to join us in that uh private circle that we do just click the link below inshallah and i would love to have you on board uh with that say salam alaikum peace salam alaikum Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh How are you doing sister, you okay? Yeah, I'm doing fine, alhamdulillah Well, I'm getting better MashaAllah, mashaAllah So, um, how can I help you? Um, the reason why I'm sharing this is to actually like warn the sisters about the evil intentions of certain individuals on social media mm -hmm. Because I've been like another victim of these dawah guys on social media mm -hmm. and i've been like deceived manipulated and abused emotionally and mentally and when i think of it actually like i've always been careful about men on social media because i can tell like the countless stories videos and articles i've read regarding the issue mm -hmm. so i thought i was safe because i knew what the tactics were and how they function mm -hmm. but subhanallah allah showed me otherwise and just like this old saying goes like you should never say never in life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so i actually so actually that's what happened to me subhanallah subhanallah so do, do, do you mind me asking what, what exactly happened what, what like what, what what transpired yes um i actually have a, i like i have an an account on instagram uh -huh. and the brother also has an account on instagram in fact like he has two accounts on social media one which is like his personal account and another one which is more like a public account do i know do i know him by any chance but excuse me do i know who this person is do um no okay. no okay he is he's well he's european but he's not um from the u from from that your country okay different, not from country, the UK. different country yeah so, yes mm -hmm. and um so he has like a personal account and he has another one which is more like public uh -huh. and it's managed like by many brothers who quite like they pretend to be students of knowledge uh -huh. and like that's where they spread the dawa and he was like among them okay i see yes I see. And, and so like based on the appearance not the physical appearance, but like from what he showed, he had like all the qualities I'm actually looking for in a husband. Like he seemed to have much more knowledge and claimed to be upon the path of the Salaf al-Salih. And 
it was something that I really appreciated about him. Uh huh. I see. So, so um, what, what, um yes. I'm just trying to work out. So, um, what 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 was that actually happened? Like when you said he uh he like uh, he he uh you said he manipulated you and abused you. Like what what was it that actually? So so actually like just um uh, he started like texting me. Our first encounter was like through a live of the public account, and uh -huh. um one night I was just bored and out of curiosity I just attended their lives and uh -huh. mind you it was like the first time I did something like that. It's just like I was just following, but I was. I would like never like really an Instagram watch. live basically something like exactly, that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so like towards the end I asked a question regarding something and he answered me like publicly publicly like telling me to ask the question again on his personal account which I didn't do and I just directly went to the public account. But I guess from that he I I like unconsciously I caught his attention because like my Instagram account like is not that I'm a knowledgeable person, but I like kind of I share like some you know Islamic posts and all that stuff, and maybe he was like attracted to that because after mm -hmm. that he started like texting me. Oh um, wow! He started, like yes, he started like getting like it's literally into the DM. Exactly. So and he, he as in he was texting your DMs or your number. In the DM. Oh, as the, as in oh okay so, yeah okay he was messaging you on Instagram okay it's very bad yes very bad and I. Oh, yeah, and I forgot to mention that the brother is married. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So, so that intrigued me, but I just like shrug it away and just kept on going with my life. So, so did you um like did you used to respond to him when he used to message you? Um, no, I wouldn't respond. He will reply like unnecessarily, and I would just read the message, but I wouldn't reply. Mashallah. And he kept going on for a while until one day he asked me a personal question and i angrily like replied to him like aren't you married brother and he said things like it's okay my wife is okay with it stuff like that and so uh, i was just quite confused because i was like what does your wife have to do with it like what's the point mm -hmm. and you know i knew that something was up like i knew that he actually wanted something but i didn't give much attention to it Mm -hmm. Which I think has been my biggest mistake because I've kind of like opened the door for him and didn't stop him from the beginning. So I, I'm I'm actually really proud of you for identifying that. I'm actually really really I just I'm I'm really really proud of you for identifying that because you know we we there's a saying in the in the English language, um, mm -hmm. which is that no matter how thin you slice the bread, there's always mm -hmm. two sides. You know, whenever you slice bread, the the bread always has two sides, even if it's going to be very thin, right? We also yes. say it always takes two to tango. Obviously, tango is a type of dance. I'm not trying to, you know, obviously it's just a saying. It's a saying that they have. That, you know, you can't tango on your own. And you, whenever you cut the the bread, there's always two sides, and there's always two sides to every story. Whereas I I think it's terrible, and I think it's disgusting that a person would use his position in the da'wah scene, uh, whether he be a da'i in a masjid or a da'i on social media to to basically try to get girls uh, and that kind of person that the reason i asked you do i know him is because if i knew him as soon as i get off the phone to you i would have been on the phone to him and i would have and i would have, i would have made sure that he's uh he's not going to do that ever again or i'd have done my best because i i take this thing very seriously like you know you know i take this very seriously if a brother and dad was trying to play games like that like if, if i come to know and i know him like he's you know this is going to be it's going to be a bad day for him um but at the same time it's important to acknowledge that okay he did bad and he'll be questioned for what he did but you have to ask yourself what could you have done to avoid the situation or what could you have done to uh limit the situation or damage control so that's very important because like a lot of the times we have this thing of like that or guys ruin lives okay but we have to understand where all those these people in the DAO they need to be responsible and they should hold themselves to a higher standard where they shouldn't basically fall into these things with girls what we must also understand is that at the end of the day women mm -hmm. are a fitna of men mm -hmm. allah said about yusuf alayhi salam uh, you know, uh, that she wanted him and he also would have been inclined towards her had it not been for the fact that Allah saved him. So the scholars took from this that Yusuf alayhi salam, it was Allah that saved him. He was a man at the end of the day. He had desires. A woman is the fitna of a man. So whereas we know that a person at da'wah scene should protect himself, we must also know that he can also fall victim to his desires if there was a prophet that 
possibly could have been in a situation where he fell into his desires of course he didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected him but if that if, if even a prophet feels that desire for women then of course a normal man would obviously do the same so then although these men are wrong for what they do I also think that sisters should also be educated and to not be let off so easily and say well why did you entertain it and I know yeah. like you're saying and I'm very proud of you mashallah that you know you you you, you genuinely um, you know, you said you try to limit your conversation and this, that, and the other. But you're my sister, right? And I genuinely am being sincere when I say I see you as a sister. So I'm going to speak to you as an older brother would. And mm -hmm. if you came to me and we were related by blood and we're not because we're related through Iman as it is anyway, I would say to you, sister, you should never have ever responded in the first place. Mm -hmm. that's, 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 that, that's my biggest mistake. Mm -hmm. And, you know, actually, the where the thing got tricked where i was actually tricked was when he actually sent a, sis a sister who who came to me and who texted me and who told me that you know there is this religious brother who's actually interested in you like who's actually mm -hmm. interested in taking me as a, as his second wife okay and automatically i knew it was him but i just like gave the benefit of the doubt and then the sister said that it's very unusual and awkward for the brother to approach you like that but he just didn't know what to do and how to do it so uh -huh. actually he sends me toward you and don't worry like his wife knows about you and if you're interested you can contact his wife directly and talk to her and that's when from that moment i've actually let my guard down in the way uh, where okay. you know when you want to please allah by doing things in the right way yeah and that person like kind of like shows it to you and you feel less like, like, skeptical. He, like he came across like he was trying to do it the right way as well so exactly that, so yeah. and this and you know in the beginning i said that he actually had from what he showed he actually had like all the qualities i was actually looking for in the husband yeah, yeah. so you know i was like inclined towards it like i i wasn't in the beginning when he was texting me i was like what why would he do that you know yeah. but when he sent the sister i was like okay you, you maybe he's serious like, he actually wants to take yes, you as a wife exactly so you exactly. let your guard down as a result of that yeah, exactly mm -hmm. so it was very new to me because i was like oh maybe he's being serious and um um afterwards so i contacted her his wife and we talked and she said so many good things about him i was just like mesmerized you know she said that he, she doesn't... He, his wife yes uh-huh so i take so i, I talked to her to his wife first and um she said that she doesn't have any problem with her husband taking another wife because he takes like good care of her like literally she was just like throwing flowers at him and i remember um talking to one of my best friends about it and she also was under the charm as well you know because of the approach we we were uh -huh. like oh you know maybe the way the way and also the the way he's uh, his wife was talking about him we were like oh maybe like he's really like a good guy and all that stuff like we were really like we really like started like believing in all that stuff and after that the brother and i we actually like introduced ourselves through his wife like she was like forwarding our messages oh, to wow. each other and we went like through the basics saying what we were looking for in the potential spouse and immediately after that i've talked to my parents about it okay the brother and i we never met uh -huh. like he never saw me okay. i never seen him either and um when i told my parents about it especially my father he was very skeptical about it because mm -hmm. the brother wanted to get married very quickly uh -huh, uh -huh. like he was trying to rush things which seemed normal to me you know like because in islam it's either marriage or nothing yeah. but my father is the kind of person who put like who put like studies over marriage and so he saw the marriage kind of like as an obstacle to my study mm -hmm. but he wasn't against the idea he just wanted to take my so he just wanted me to take my time to study first mm -hmm. so yeah and so the brother he talked to both of my parents he talked to my mom he talked to my father and after that he asked the, the my father the permission to talk directly directly to me uh -huh. and that was my downfall ah uh, i see i see so so dad gave him permission to speak to you directly exactly and my okay. father like gave it to him but my father like after that he would 
tell me also not to talk to him, but it was kind of like too late because we started like talking a lot to each other. Uh. And yeah, in the beginning, we were discussing about marriage and how to convince my father to mm. let me marry and study at the same time. But subhanAllah, just like like the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, like, like when a woman and a man are alone, like shaitan is the third, uh -huh. um, things went downhill very quickly. Like he started being extremely flirtatious and I didn't stop him. Mm. Subhanallah. So in the end, he just he just didn't go through with it, like. Um, in the end, um, actually, what happened was there was this problem because, um, the 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 brother is European, mm -hmm. and my parents are like I'm sub like I'm sub Saharan, mm -hmm. and my parents like they live in Africa, and so the 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 thing my well my father. Actually, like the brother was like he's married like to his first wife, but they are married. Um, like they are recognized, like they had they had a civil marriage, and my parents were concerned about the civil marriage because they said that if we get married, if we get married religiously only and don't register a civil marriage, when he divorces you, you won't be recognized in Europe. Mm -hmm. And so my that's that's when my my father like had a problem with it, and so after all that we actually had a muqabala together with my uncle, mm -hmm. we met and all that stuff. Well, you met and, you met with the brother, as in the brother yeah, came down. Yeah, and I yes, and I saw him like for the first time. But after all this time, like he has been like flirtatious in everything, and um, like when I. And the thing was, he would actually also play with um with my with my feelings because, um like, he wanted to meet my parents, but he couldn't meet them because it happened like during um uh, the quarantine, mm. and so he couldn't like travel to go and meet them, and so he would like he would show me tickets that he booked, you know, like he would make all these efforts which would just like show me that he was actually really interested. And I was, so, I was so, just like. So was it that he wasn't interested in the end? Like, what, what was um? The, what... the thing is, the thing is, after the muqabala, he started being very distant, and I actually didn't understand. I thought that maybe it was something related, um, to the physical appearance. But um, one day I actually saw him following um a sister. When actually, like, he used to follow sister, but then unfollow them, and I. Um, so that, but I didn't really say anything about it. But when he followed that particular, like that specific sister that I know, I kind of like felt that there was something, something was actually going on. Mm -hmm. But um, I didn't say anything. Um, after a few days, after like a few days went by, and um, there was I had I had another sister who came to me and she asked me about the brother. And when she asked me about the brother, I actually knew that something like that something was wrong because she told me that the brother asked actually asked one of her friends to be his second wife, to which I've like I automatically So, so he was I, asking a few girls basically to be second wife. Exactly. And one of the girls happened to be my friend. Mm, I see. I see. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. So yeah, did he know it was your friend? Or he just... She told me, the sister told me about it later. Like, and she, she gave And she me... knew, she knew and he knew, huh? That you were talking. No, she he, she didn't. But did yeah, she... She, yeah, she did. The sister who told me that, yeah, she knew. She knew. So she, she was trying to be his third wife then. Well, she told me, like, like months after. Mm -hmm. So I... Like, but what I'm saying is, she knew you were looking into that brother, as in you were, you were, you were, you were looking into him. Yes, yes. And he knew that she was your friend. He didn't knew. Okay. He didn't okay. know. I'm sorry. Okay, he but didn't. but she knew. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then in the end, basically, you just found out that he was just basically speaking to many different sisters, or he was trying to speak to many different sisters. Yes, and after we knew about it, because when I asked him about it. He pretended he didn't know what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And when I actually like exposed him, 
about it and we said and the sister and i actually like said that we will expose him but not like really we were just trying to scare him off mm. the brother started threatening us like he started um one like when i was talking to his wife in the beginning you know like we never met and so the wife asked me a picture of me without my hijab on, uh -huh. which i was very skeptical in the beginning but then the sister like she sent me a vocal note where she said that you know like i'm not going to show him anything i'm just going to see and all that stuff and so i trusted her and i sent her the picture so after all this happened the brother started saying that he would threaten me that he would like um explain was my picture actually he was just showing the opposite of what he was <laughs> or, or of, of, of what he 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 showing he was showing the, yeah, yeah, the, he was the yes. opposite of what he was showing satanic exactly. stuff subhanallah and and um you know i was there was a moment where i was kind of like very attached to him mm -hmm. but after all of that things happened subhanallah it's just as if like it just went away Alhamdulillah. like Allah made all of these yeah, but uh, like I'm still so mad about it mm -hmm. because like because of him I almost lost my apartment because he made so many like promises that I actually like believed like a like a dumb person I mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. like I actually believe in it and all that stuff like and like when I like and you know after all of this happened he kept on going on with his life as if nothing happened ever mm -hmm. happened and and the, sometimes the question i'm asking myself is like what if i was still attached to him so i will be the one suffering still crying over yeah. him and be bad about him when he's actually like moving on yeah as if nothing happened but and, alhamdulillah you're not and, though right like you're, you're you're over him though right yeah um, I, i'm just angry and i i know i shouldn't be saying that but i kind of like you know he has a daughter and I, I i hope that that will happen to him so that he will see what it is like to 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 do something wrong to other people because at the end of the day i you know i didn't ask for it and i actually like made i don't know how to say it but i like, i've always tried to be careful and so the, the question i'm asking myself is like why would what, what's the reason behind it like why would they do that like, mm -hmm. what, what's, what's the point of doing it? Like, mm -hmm. I, I don't understand. Okay, so I've understood the situation and I'll try and impart some advice to you as best as possible, inshallah. So, um, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah, amma ba'ad. Sister, this is, this, is, this is what I would advise you, yeah? Now, you see when it comes to these kind of situations, um, there's two ways you can look at it. You can either look at it from the angle of something was done to you or you could look at it from the angle of you did something. But I mean, let me repeat that one more time. So you can either look at it from the angle of someone did something wrong to you or you could look at it from the angle of you did something wrong. Now, now just bear with me for a second because it's going to make sense. It might sound like it's not making sense right now, but it's going to make sense inshallah. Me, I prefer whenever people do wrong to me, whenever people violate me, whenever people oppress me, whenever they break my heart or they hurt me or they or they insult me or whatever happens to me in my life in terms of oppression from another human being, I always like to take the approach of what did I do wrong that resulted in me being hurt? Instead of asking the question, why did he hurt me? Why did she hurt me? I like to ask myself, why did I allow myself to get hurt? The reason I like to ask myself that question is because that question puts me in control. I don't like anyone other than Allah being in control of my life. And I and if I start saying, you did this to me, he did this to me, why did he do this to me? Well, if you say, why did she do this to me? Why did that happen to me? That means I've placed my life in the hands of someone else, but it's not in anyone else's hands. It's in Allah's hands, and Allah's given me control of my life with His permission. So, a brother gave me advice once. He said, "You can never change people. You can only change how you deal with them and how you react to them." Do you see? And that's what the religion teaches us here, because, like, for example, and I'll tell you about the religion in a second. But coming back to the point, like, if you was right now, you're resenting him, right? You said he's moved on in life, but you're not. Because you're angry 
understandably so, he violated you. He, he lured you in as if he wanted to marry you, but then he was doing that to his other girls. And he didn't end things in an appropriate way. It's okay if he didn't want to marry you and he wanted to marry another woman, but it doesn't seem like he ended it in a nice way. He just jumped to another girl and left you kind of hanging. Like, that's that's disgusting behavior. He's, he's really wrong to have done that. So I understand why you feel this pain. But the issue here is that he's moved on. So you see what some of the scholars, they say resentment is like you... Having poison and drinking it yourself and only killing yourself. Resentment is like poison, but you drink instead of giving it to him. Like you know, poison you want to give it to your enemy. Obviously, you're not. I'm not saying to kill anyone, but the concept is that you know, if you have poison, you'd want to give it to your enemy, right? Mm -hmm. But resentment, hatred for someone, is a poison that instead of giving to them, you drink it yourself. The only one who suffers is you. Mm -hmm. He's moved on with his life He's probably talking to another two, three girls You're still suffering And you can't move on because you hate him Because you resent him You don't have to like him You don't have to stop hating him But resentment means like he's living in your heart Like he lives inside of you rent free He lives in your mind and your heart rent free Why are you letting another man Live in your heart for free And he's moved on Do you see And that's why, that's why I like to ask myself Hey, 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 you're not in control of me what did I do wrong to get myself in this situation? And sister, that's really going to help you to take control of the situation, help you to heal. Is when you look at the situation as to what did I do wrong that allowed me to get into this situation? And I think you did two things. And this doesn't take away from all the wrong that he did. But I remember, I can't change him, but I can only change myself. That's what you should say to yourself. I have people where, that violate me. They, they really oppress me. But I say to myself, okay, come, you oppress me. What did I do wrong here though? My, what I did wrong is not deserving of what you did. But maybe if I'm hard on myself, I can future, in, in the future, I can avoid this pain. Because the only way I can avoid pain in the future with the permission of Allah is not by changing others, but it's just by changing myself. You see? So then the question you have to ask yourself is, what did you do wrong? And I think my advice to you as an older brother who really concerned for you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is two things. Number one, you let your guard down. Yep. By actually talking to him And number two your, The issue of your dad Allowing him to give you permission To talk to him Because had you Not done that And you followed the sharia Of Allah To the key To mm -hmm. the key You mm -hmm. would not have been In this situation mm -hmm. And that's why I always like to say To these sisters Who are in similar situations Where there's these guys Who are in the da'wah I'm saying At the end of the day It's mm -hmm. true That guy shouldn't have Lured you in but then you have to be smart and say, this guy's claiming to be a student of knowledge. He's talking to me inappropriately. What kind of a student of knowledge is this? That should have been the first sign for you to get out. And when a sister comes to me and she says to me, oh, there's a guy who's got an Instagram account, that account, and he's talking to me inappropriately. I'm like, sister, he was talking to you inappropriately for a period of time. You carried on talking to him. You realize this guy is not as righteous or as pious as he appeared to be. You should have stopped talking to him. You carried on talking to him, allowed yourself to get hurt, and then wanted to blame him and blame him only. No, a portion of the blame is on you as well because you allowed it to happen. Do you see? Now, I understand that you're saying, you know, in the moment you couldn't see, love is blind, all of these things. But that still doesn't take away from the fact that it was wrong to carry on speaking to him. Do you see? And that brings me on to another point. Because you said, why? So Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, has got 20 reasons on how, 20 steps on how to deal with a person who breaks, who breaks your heart. 20 steps on how to deal with a person who violates you, who oppresses you. And what I'll do is I'll get the link. One of my teachers, he taught it in English. So I'm going to get my colleague who's speaking to you on WhatsApp to send that to you. It's 20 things that are, 20. if someone oppresses you, if someone violates you, if someone causes you harm, 20 things to do in, in how to deal with that pain. 20 things and how to deal with that, uh, to, to that that resentment that you have the person. One of the points he's mentioned is powerful. He says, if someone violates you, it's never free. Um, let me repeat that. If someone violates you and oppresses you, it's likely that you probably do it, did a sin. And because of that sin, this took place. Because remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ma asabaka min sayyatin fa min nafsik. Whenever bad comes to you in your life, it's because of yourself. Like, وَمَا أَصَابَكَ مِنْ حَسَنَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ But any good that comes to you from Allah. So then, so then, so then, I always try to advise brothers and sisters. A brother says to me, this girl broke my heart. A girl says to me, this guy broke my heart. I said, you know what? Perhaps the heartbreak 
is a punishment for the sin of the free mixing in the first place or the sin of talking in an inappropriate place in the first place. Now, that suddenly makes the whole perspective change. You know why? Because you realize, hold up, this happened because of me, mm -hmm. not because of him. So then the same way Allah Azza wa Jal made me taste a bit of difficulty because of my sin, if I repent to Allah and change, Allah will give me joy. And suddenly I'm empowered by accepting and acknowledging a sin, I'm empowered. But if you don't acknowledge the sin for what it really is and fully control it and own it and say, this was my mistake for talking to him, forever you're going to be a victim and he's going to live in your heart and you're always going to say, why, why, why and be angry. You would have never solved the problem, never maybe repented back to Allah properly and perhaps you'd always feel this pain for a very long time or forever whilst he moves on free of charge. Do you see? Whereas though, if you come back to Allah say, Allah, I understand. I understand what you were trying to show me here, Allah. You were trying to show me be stronger next time. Be tougher next time. So you made what did Allah say? Dhahar al fasadu bil barri, dhahar al fasadu fil barri wal bahar, dhahar al fasadu fil barri wal bahar bima kasabat aydinas liyudiqa ba'dahum, liyudiq liyudiqa ba'dah ma amilu. So that you can taste some of what you did. Allah said, corruption spread in the land and the sea. Why is it that corruption spread? Why is this evil spread? Why are you experiencing evil? ليضيق بعض ما عملوا. So you can taste some of what you did. As in you did something wrong. Allah is trying to make you taste this, which is a lesser pain, as opposed to the greater pain. Imagine more happened and more haram came. إِنَّ لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّ إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ Allah showed you the lesser pain to save you from the greater pain. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ So that you can come back to Him. So now you come back, you say, Allah, to Ilaik, I've come back to you. You say, Allah, I've responded, I've repented to you right now. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said tobas for the people who they done the sin. They would they, out of ignorance, they made toba after it. They are the ones that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He accepts their toba. Do you see? So you've got to come back to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah will take that toba, and then what Allah will do is you'll become inshallah from his awliya. You become from the awliya of Allah. And then the Prophet said that Allah said that anyone who harms one of the awliya of Allah, Allah declares war on that person. So Allah would declare a war on anyone that harms you without you even having to do anything. Without even having to do anything. Look at Nuh alayhi salam. Nuh alayhi salam was being oppressed, but he was an awliya. He's wali min awliya illa. He was close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said two words. He said, inni maghlubun fantasir. Two words. He said, maghlubun. Lord, I am, they, uh, 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 they've overcome me. Fantastic, help me. What did Allah say? فَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ أَبْوَاب مِنَ السَّمَاءِ أَبْوَابَ السَّمَاءِ Allah said, we opened on him the doors, we opened on the doors from the sky and we rained down on them water. We just, Allah destroyed them all. He said two words and he didn't even repeat it. He said two words once. He said, إِنِّي مَغْلُوبٌ مغلوب فَانْتَصِرْ Allah, they've overcome me. Allah, I'm overcome. I'm in trouble, Ya Allah, help me. Straight to Allah, open the heavens. Rain came pouring down, destroyed all of those people. That's what happens when you become close to Allah. You come close to Allah. Do you see? And the way you come close to Allah is through Tawbah. By, the way you come close to Allah is by saying, Allah, I am, I, this is my fault. I understand the mistake here. I understand the mistake here. This is, my, this is me. He has a mistake. In his grave, he'll be asked. In, oh, sorry, in his grave, he'll be he he'll, he'll, he'll go into his own grave. On the day of judgment, he'll be questioned for his own for his own mistake. You, your mistake, you'll be questioned for. Do you see? You gotta come right with Allah for you, and then the rest Allah will take care. Does that help? Yes, yeah, Subhanallah, it has helped a lot. Like I just, my heart is just. I know that maybe I, like, I don't even know what to say actually because I'm just like. SubhanAllah, your advice has helped me a lot mm -hmm. and it has also made me realize that yes, I was um, in a mistake and I don't want this to happen anymore. Like, I'm just so done. Like, even when it comes to marriage now, I'm even scared because at the end of the day, I'm just like, maybe people are not even sincere, you know? And so I just want to turn to Allah. And just don't even want to worry about all these things anymore. Beautiful. And when you turn to Allah, leave it to Allah to provide for you the right husband for you. You will see, you will come. There are sincere people there. There are definitely sincere people. There are definitely real people out there. But Allah is just giving you an experience in life so that you can become stronger and better. 
Do you see? You know, if you don't, if you don't fall, if you don't fall, you can't get up, right? Sometimes you have to fall to get up. And in that getting up, there's beauty. You don't want a person falls. If he was always standing, he hasn't proved anything. But when you fall and you climb up, that's struggle, that's difficulty. And you do it for the sake of Allah. That's, there's beauty in that. Do you see there's beauty in that? So uh, I think, inshallah, with that, you can, you know, you you can learn and you can grow. And I pray that Allah honors you in this life and the next. And know that Allah is not heedless of the oppressive people. Don't worry about him. Allah is watching him. But what you got to worry about is Allah also watching you. And you got to come right with Allah and let Allah deal with everything else. And I want you to please watch this series that my colleague is going to send to you, inshallah, uh, after the call is done. Watch that series, inshallah. It will really help you. 20 ways from Ibn Taymiyyah how to deal with people who oppress you. I will do so, inshallah. Inshallah. Forgive me, sister. I've got to head off now because I've got another appointment, but I hope that that was beneficial for you. No, it was really beneficial. May Allah reward you a lot for everything. Barakallah fiq. Barakallah fiq for your time and for your advices. Jazakallah I really fiqh. appreciate it. May Allah bless you. May Allah honor you in this life and the next. Take care of yourself. Assalamu alaikum. Guys, this right here is a Big Mac. Do you have any idea how much McDonald's spends every year on their advertisement? They spend $450 million. You know why? Because this Haram Burger is valuable to them. Now, on the flip side, when it comes to promoting a Dawa project, how much do you think Dawa organization's budget is? And I'm talking about organizations that don't compromise their da'wah. They keep it 100% Quran, Sunnah without doing anything dodgy. Our budgets are nowhere near close. Now the kuffar don't feel shy to put their money behind what they believe in. Because they value it. But we know for definite that they don't value their burgers and their haram meat more than we value the book of Allah. Then why is it that we become so tight-fisted when it comes to spending money on La ilaha illallah? You see, it's embarrassing that you will struggle to find a house on planet Earth that doesn't know about McDonald's and doesn't know about the Big Mac. Yet, there are houses that don't know about La ilaha illallah. That's an embarrassment. For that reason, brothers and sisters, I'm going to ask you, to get involved in an investment that's going to benefit you in your life and the next life. And that is to support our social media data project. You're going to struggle. And this is respectfully a challenge. You will struggle to find a data organization that's got as much output as us. I mean, look at our productivity and look at our reach. We're the closest thing that you're going to get to a mainstream, uncompromised, Fully 100% classical, pure understanding of the deen on social media in the West. If you find someone better than us, if you find someone that's doing it better than us and bigger than us, go support them. It's on you to go support them. But if not, then brothers and sisters, we're doing a job for you. I don't know about you, but I gave my life to this cause. I gave my life to it. Kuffar can put 100% in behind what? Haram food. And we can't do that behind what? The speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without any further ado, brothers and sisters, donate at the link below. And let's get la ilaha illallah spreading around the world. Peace.